and that's just the kind of person I am. Opinionated and moronic. I see. Well, this panel is certainly interesting. The issue is morality. Recently, rock artists joined together to provide famine aid to Alaska with the song Do They Know It's the Fourth of July? Critics complain it's immoral to meddle in the affairs of other peoples and cultures. Pastor Richards... What? Uh, what do you make of meddling in other people's business like an over-opinionated sociopath? Well, let me say that money could have gone to much better things like reserving a place by my side in the Pastor Richard Salvation statue. But I digress and plug. Stop doing Don't that. Don't interrupt me, boy. Anywho, I address the Alaska issue in Chapter 23 of my book. You see, the Alaskans are lunatics, plain and simple. They eat whales and snow and are asleep in the freezer. Who wants to eat snow every day? Oh, I tried to help. I sent a helicopter with copies of my book, but they burned them in a pile for heat. If the people of Alaska choose to live there, let them. But don't come crying when you're tired of eating penguin and it snows 18 feet a day. Yes, but don't you think it's important? I think it's very important to listen to me, young man. That's what makes the state of Florida great. Rather than help improve where they are, people nationwide abandon their hometowns, come down here, and shove their beliefs down everyone else's throats. That's the American way, always has been. We should send some pictures of Florida to those people in Alaska. I tell you, they'd throw down that bear pelt, saddle up the sled dogs, and get pulled all the way to Vice City. And I should know, I'm from Mars. No, you're not. Uh... Mars, Alabama. I founded three colleges there. The problem with Alaska is that people don't get naked. If you can't work on your car, or play the cello, or use sharp knives in your birthday suit, then what's the point of living? Uh, well, it is a bit cold there. People put on clothes when it's cold. We evolved without a warm covering of hair. That's a lie, sir. We come from the great meteor of truth. Clothes are a habit, like shaving and taking out the trash. As soon as you stop, you realize what a prisoner you were to society and the twisted state of morality. People think that nudists are immoral. Well, we're not. I'm married. I love my wife. In our commune, it's so wonderful to wake up in a big bed and go to breakfast clothed in nothing but a smile. What kind of people are there in your weirdo commune? Single people, families, elderly couples, teachers politicians, and especially truck drivers. Truck drivers understand what it's like to be by yourself for days on end, with nothing but country music on the radio and a stick in your hand, shifting gears over and over. Truckers realize there's nothing to be ashamed of on the open road. Get naked and beat it on down the line. You've never seen a sense of community and morality like a nudist colony. We share everything, the cooking, cleaning, wives, a share sense of what it's like to be a complete social outcast. Oh, uh, wait right there, Barry. I'm getting something through the cans. Uh, headphones, that is. Yes? Yeah, okay. Uh, we just want to tell you a little more about public radio funding. We'll be right back after this. Hello. I'm sure you're enjoying our high-quality programming. I'm Michelle Montanius. Jonathan, I think it's time to acknowledge the people who are sending money in to shut us up and end this dreadful begathon. Here's a $10 pledge from Fran in Little Havana. Wow. You think she could have given more than that? Yes, mean bitch. I hope she dies an agonizing death. Absolutely, Michelle. And remember, if you want us to wish you well, dig deep. And dig soon. That's right. At any moment, conservatives could vote to end our funding and place a fast food restaurant where our studios are. See, there are some people that think everything has to make money. It doesn't. That's why you should give now. Correct. Next week is Environmental Week, sponsored by My Batsu and the Vice City Power Corporation. And next month, we're celebrating Proust's influence on Vice City in association with the Degenitron. But for now, let's return to pressing issues. Remember, VCPR is an advertising-free zone, much like the moon or Times Square. Welcome back. The show is Pressing Issues. The subject is morality. I'm Maurice Chavez. Let's carry on pressing the issue. Now, when the Europeans were done ruining their continent with bland food and soccer riots and arrived in the Americas in the late 15th century, the subject soon turned to morality. You see, Europeans wanted to colonize America, so they had somebody to make fun of. The pilgrims left England for the religious freedom in Holland, where they visited coffee shops, and after they packed up their ships with plenty of coffee, tea, and cakes to liven up the trip, they set sail for the New World which they heard had a magnificent roller coaster. Once they got here, they were very hungry, having been on a ship for 65 days. So they ate for three days straight. Thanksgiving quickly became an annual custom. America was founded by people who wanted a place where they could tell other people how to live. And I'm a history major. But do we have the right? The question, 
Is it moral to celebrate Thanksgiving, a holiday that is clearly about gluttony, annoying relatives, and awful casserole? Well, I for one love a casserole, and at my weekly meeting, my congregation has a potluck. You see, a casserole is a lot like life, Maurice, and that's the basis of my philosophy. If you put a bunch of leftovers from the fridge in a pan and bake it, somebody will probably eat it. It's like my book. You believe in your favorite sports team, then they get massacred. You believe in gravity, then it turns upside down on you. You love your favorite TV show, then the network ends it with a lousy finale. But you can believe in me, and if you believe in something, support it. It's one thing to love something, but if you don't shower it with money, then just don't talk to me. Communism, don't make me puke my guts out, please. Well, I myself love casseroles on Thanksgiving. And the way to teach your children the rich history of America is through theme parks. I just love Pilgrim World, especially the part where you get to slaughter your own buffalo and take home the meat, or give the locals the flu while buying their land off them for a pittance. That's what children need. Uh, uh, what is? Wholesome activities that benefit the family. Now, what good is it if a kid plays Degeneratron for five hours? Oh, sure, he's killing space aliens, thank you very much, but it ain't putting food on the table. And he's learning bad language, like bleep, bleep, bleep. When my family go out to dinner, we're starting from scratch. Even if Daddy is working late, again, we build our own spears, smear ourselves in dung, and then wait in a swamp for something to come by. In the suburbs? I bet your neighbors love you. How long do you wait? Don't you get arrested? Hey, mister, I'm married. Look at the finger. It has a ring. I've got children for Pete's sake. Stop eyeing me up. I wasn't. You were. I can see you undressing me with your eyes. Well, I tell you, I was a cheerleader and nearly a prom queen. And I could have married anyone, but I chose John. I chose him because he had a kind face and a rich dad. I didn't know he was going to cheat on me or embarrass me. I didn't know. But I won't be made a fool of. I've got the children. Okay, Jan. It's okay. Men are idiots. Ask my ex-wife. <laughs> Don't worry. Stay calm. I'm not eyeing you up. But I am a little worried about you. How are the children? Do they enjoy school? Of course they do. That's precisely why I'm going to start homeschooling my children. High school is a cult. There's a group of savages that rule the roost and get all the girls and everyone else is picked on and abused. It happened to me and look at me. I'm a deranged mess and my husband cheats on me. I don't want my kids to go to a public high school. Instead, we have a prom each year in my living room. And that leads to my next question. People in high school in Chile are all naked. I've about had it with you, Barry. I try to be fair. I try to be kind. But you are a freak and a liar and wasting everybody's time. The organs below the belt are for reproduction and removing of bodily waste. There's no reason that when I go to buy a soda or a transmission, I need to be distracted by your privates dangling about. Now, when I go to the store to buy an air conditioning filter, I'd rather not have to look at your moneymaker, amigo. I'm glad you are proud of it. But when people of Vice City are in a quickie mart, they should be able to have a simple financial transaction without seeing your fire hose. Are you with me? Sorry, Maurice. That's okay. Just try to behave. I think the sun must have got to you or something. Yes, maybe that's it. Uh, Maurice, if I may, you have a fine show here, and, and I'm glad to be on it. But everyone within the sound of my voice and smell will die in the fires of doom. It is written, TV is trash, radio is trash, our newspapers are run by Canadians with an agenda. Our very way of life is threatened. We form this great state to play golf, and I'll be damned if any weirdo hippies are going to tell us we can't fill in wetlands and make a home for ourselves, complete with 18-hole championship standard courses and solutions. Collective admission. Heathens will ruin the land. Acid will rain from the skies. We'll never hear my voice again. It will be anarchy. TV teaches immorality. Refugees, glue, the price of tea in China. How can we raise children in this environment? My little boy asked me the other day, Mommy, are unicorns real? What am I supposed to say to that? Do I lie and make myself as bad as the boy's father? Or do I break the little boy's heart and ruin his life so that he ends up a nudist or a freak or something? It's a difficult question, Jan. A very difficult question. Is it right to lie? Clothes are a lie, Maurice. No, Barry. Clothes are a way of keeping warm and not getting arrested. No policeman has ever hit me with his truncheon. I'd like to hit you back to hell, you sicko. Your filth. Human form of vermin. A blight on a fine society picket fences and garden parties and everyone coming three times a day to my statue to pay homage. Pastor Richards, as a human being, I have to say I find 